Hello students, welcome to Read Med Prep Academy channel. Today we are going to discuss about Human Reproductive Health Part 4. In this we are going to talk about infertility and assisted reproductive technology. What is infertility? Infertility is the inability to conceive or produce children even after unprotected sexual cohabitation. What is male infertility? Inability of the man to produce sufficient numbers or quality of sperms to impregnate a woman. What is female infertility? Inability of a woman to become pregnant or maintain a pregnancy. Now, let us move on to the causes of infertility. In the causes of infertility, we are going to discuss as general causes, female causes and male causes. What are the general causes? Tumors formed in the pituitary or the reproductive organs. Inherited mutations of genes responsible for the biosynthesis of the sex hormones. Normally, when the genes are in a normal condition, there will be normal protein formed and the hormones formed are also normal. When a gene becomes mutated, there will be formation of abnormal protein or sometimes no protein is formed. This results in formation of abnormal sex hormones or no sex hormones. Number three is inadequate nutrition before adulthood. Number four is aging. Number five is different types of long term stress damages which may be domestic or at work or in routine social activities. Number six is injection of toxins. This injection of toxins like heavy metal, cadmium, heavy use of alcohol and tobacco and marijuana can also cause infertility. Systemic diseases like diabetes, hypertension can also cause infertility. Usage of drugs or medicines for various diseases can cause infertility. Now, this is to sum up the entire causes of infertility. The patients suffering from cardiovascular disease or hypertension can have erectile dysfunction and may have infertility or patients on asthma or patients with vitamin D deficiency who have associated like obesity, like diabetes, like clothing, then consanguinity and genetic disorders, cystathione beta synthetase deficiency, thalassemia or varicocele or Klinefelter syndrome, PCOS, sexually transmitted diseases, hypothyroidism, diabetes, lifestyle changes like stress, alcohol and caffeine, sports, weight and obesity, smoking, environmental factors that can affect like air pollution, workers who are working in heavy metal factories, petroleum hydrocarbons and in furnaces where there is excessive heat. What are the female causes of infertility? One is malformation of the uterus or the cervix or the fallopian tubes. Here you can see the congenital uterine anomalies like diadelphic uterus, unicornuate uterus, arcuate uterus, septate uterus which can be partial or complete, bicornuate uterus which can be partial or complete. These congenital anomalies of the uterus and the cervix in the vagina causes difficulty in the impregnation or implantation of the ovum into the endometrium. Underdeveloped ovaries or underdeveloped fallopian tubes, imperforate hymen and menstrual cycle problems that are caused because of the polycystic ovarian syndrome, injuries to the ovaries, pelvic inflammatory disease that can occur resulting in the damage to the reproductive system of the female like the uterus, the ovarian damage resulting in the decrease or affection of the release of the ovum or the damage to the fallopian tube causing obstruction to the fallopian tube or damage to the uterus and the cervix resulting in the damage of the endometrium. Uterine fibroids, uterine fibroids may be of different types like pedunculated subserosal fibroid pedunculated submucosal fibroid, subserosal fibroid, submucosal fibroid, intramural fibroid, all these fibroids can cause difficulty in the implantation of the ovum into the uterus. Similarly, endometriosis. What is endometriosis? It is a tissue which is similar to the endometrium that goes outside the uterus. It can be in the ovary affecting the release of the ovum. It can be in the fallopian tube causing the blockage of the fallopian tube or it can be outside the endometrial area causing thickening of the uterus. So all these problems can also lead to infertility. Low body fat or anorexia in women, it is a psychiatric eating disorder which is characterized by losing weight. The anorexia nervosa which is the condition, the physical signs include wish to be thin or fear of being fat, rapid weight loss, strange eating habits or refusing to eat, cannot concentrate, tried and cold, baby hair all over the body and the person is thinned 
What are the health effects that are caused in anorexia nervosa? They stop menstruating, can cause infertility, hypoplastic ovaries and the uterus and the reproductive organs, damage to the heart and other organs, osteoporosis, depression, hair falls out, nails become brittle. Sometimes death can occur in 10 to 20 percent of the people. And next is the females can develop antibodies against the sperm of the partner. The sperm antibodies may be IgG antibodies which can block the sperm and prevent the fusion of the sperm with the ovum. Similarly, the antigen that is present in the tail can produce an antibody which is an IgA antibody. This antibody prevents the motility of the sperm and stops the penetration of the cervical mucus. All the women are born with ovaries, but some do not have functional uterus. This condition is called mayer rokitansky kuster hauser syndrome, otherwise shortly called MRKHS. You can see in this that there are functional ovaries and fallopian tubes, but the uterus, the tubes and the vagina are absent in this syndrome. To sum up, the factors of the female infertility are age, polycystic ovary syndrome, endometriosis, hormonal imbalances, uterine factors, fallopian tube blockage, ovulation problems, complications from past childhood, recurrent miscarriages, egg reserve and eating disorder like anorexia nervosa. What are the male causes of infertility? Underdeveloped testis or the penis called hypogonadism where there is small testicular size or small penis size which results in decrease in the secretion of the sperm or formation of the sperm or decrease in the performance of the sexual act. Then the undescended testis or ectopic testis called cryptorchidism. The undescended testis may be in the abdomen or in the inguinal region or in the inguinal canal, suprascrotal, in the ectopic the testis can be present in the prepenile region or in the femoral region. The swollen veins can be present in the scrotum. This is called varicocele. The varicocele looks like a bag of worms when you see from outside. And these tortuous and enlarged vessels or, or the testicular veins will cause increase the temperature of the testis and decrease in the synthesis of sperms. Tight clothing in men can raise the temperature of the scrotum and can affect the sperm production in males. Males may also develop autoimmune response to their own sperm. There is a blood testis barrier which prevents the sperm entering the blood. Here, because of some causes, the blood testis barrier may be affected. Sperms may enter into the circulation or enter into the reticular endothelial system. And this will trigger a antibody response. This antibody that is formed will not permit the sperm to enter and fertilize the egg. So antibodies prevent the sperm from interacting with the zona pellucida. The obstruction in the transport of the sperms, obstructive azoospermia. This obstruction may be in the epididymis or in the vas deferens. Other factors that can cause male infertility are nutritional deficiencies, endocrine disorders, genetic disorders, psychological disorders, sexually transmitted infections that can affect the reproductive organs, exposure of the scrotum to high temperatures, exposure to workplace hazards, such as radiation or toxic substances. So all these are causes of infertility. Now let us move on to assisted reproductive technology. What is this assisted reproductive technology? It is a collection of procedures which includes the handling of the gametes and or embryos outside the body to achieve pregnancy. This is collectively called assisted reproductive technology. It increases the chances of pregnancy in infertile couples or couples who do not have children. What are the different types of assisted reproductive technology? One is intrauterine insemination called IUI. Then in vitro fertilization called IVF. Embryo transfer shortly called ET. Zygote intrafallopian transfer otherwise called ZIFT. Gamete intrafallopian transfer otherwise called GIFT. Intracytoplasmic sperm injection called ICSI shortly. Then pre-implantation genetic diagnosis oocyte and sperm donation, then surrogacy. Let us discuss one by one. What is this intrauterine insemination, otherwise called IUI? This is a procedure used to treat infertile men with low sperm count, otherwise called oligozoospermia. The semen is collected from the husband if the quality and the quantity is sufficient or from a donor introduced into the uterus through the vagina by a catheter after stimulating the ovaries to produce more ova. The sperms swim towards the fallopian tubes and fertilize the egg. This results in the normal pregnancy. The goal of IUI is to increase the number of sperm that reach the 
ovum to fertilize the ovum in the fallopian tubes. Now next what is in vitro fertilization? Otherwise it's called IVF or test tube baby. In this technique, the sperm and the eggs are allowed to unite outside the body in a laboratory. One or more fertilized eggs may be transferred into the woman's uterus, where they may implant into the uterine lining and develop into a fetus. Excess of embryos that are formed in vitro may be cryopreserved or frozen for the future use initially. IVF was used to treat women with blocked or damaged or absent fallopian tubes. Today, IVF is used to treat many causes of infertility. What are the basic steps involved in IVF? The basic steps involved in the IVF treatment cycle is ovarian stimulation, egg retrieval, fertilization, embryo culture and embryo transfer. Here you can see Initially, the stimulation of the ovaries is done. Later, the ovum is retrieved from the ovary. Then, the fertilization of the eggs are done on the same day. And embryo culture is done once the zygote is formed from 0 to 5 days. When there are excess of embryos formed, these are freeze-dried or cryopreserved from 3 to 5 days. And within the 3 to 5 days, the embryo that is formed is transferred into the uterus. And after 14 days, a pregnancy test is done. This is the overall view of in vitro fertilization. Egg retrieval. Egg retrieval is done by minor surgery under general anesthesia using an ultrasound guidance. After 34 to 37 hours of HCG injection, human chorionic gonadotropin injection. Here you can see that through the ultrasound guidance, a needle is inserted through the vagina and through the fornix. Through the left fornix if the left ovary is used or through the right fornix if the right ovary is used and the ovum is retrieved from that ovary. The eggs are prepared and stripped from the surrounding cells. At the same time sperm preparation is also done using a special media. How the sperms are prepared? The semen is taken in a density gradient solution and it is centrifuged. The seminal plasma accumulates on the surface, dead or damaged sperms accumulate in the middle and good motile sperms which are live accumulate in the bottom of the test tube which is called sperm pellets and these sperm pellets are removed from the tube and they are washed and they are diluted in a fresh medium and this fresh medium will contain live good quality and quantity of sperms after preparing the sperms the eggs are brought together 10,000 to 1 lakh motile sperms are needed for the egg fertilization in vitro the eggs and the sperms are placed in a in vitro condition and the zygote is formed. Here you can see the fertilization taking place in vitro. Now after the zygote is formed, it is allowed to divide to form 8 cell blastomere in in vitro culture. The first division of the zygote will result in the formation of 2 cells. The second division of mitosis will cause the 2 cells to form 4 cells. And the third mitosis will result in the formation of eight cells and the eight cell blastomere is then transferred to the uterus. The transfer of this eight cell blastomere into the uterus is called embryo transfer technique. Here you can see that the embryo is prepared from day three to day five the embryo is transferred into the uterus. How the embryo transfer process is achieved? Embryo transfer is the process of placing the embryos inside the uterine cavity. It is the final step of the in vitro fertilization cycle. Embryo is loaded in a fine soft catheter. Under ultrasound guidance, the catheter is advanced to the middle of the uterine cavity and the embryo is discharged. Embryo transfer is usually done in three days. That is, the embryo should be in a eight cell stage after fertilization. Some embryos in the stage of the blastosis can also be transferred in 5 days after fertilization. Embryo transfer is a painless procedure and most cases anesthesia is not required. Patient can go home within 20 minutes of embryo transfer and the embryo stays in the uterine cavity by surface tension and rest is not necessary after embryo transfer. The embryo transfer occurring results in the implantation of the embryo into the uterus and the embryo further develops slowly into a well-grown fetus. Now what is this cryo preparation of embryos? The embryos excessively formed in vitro are often used when there are more embryos than needed for a single intra vitro fertilization transfer. These embryos are preserved and freeze dried. 
how these frozen embryos are used for transfer. Embryo cryoperspiration can provide an additional opportunity for pregnancy through a frozen embryo transfer, otherwise called FET, without undergoing ovarian stimulation or the retrieval of the ovum from the ovary. We can see here that the embryos which are cultured in vitro at a temperature of 37 degrees centigrade or 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit is frozen at a temperature of minus 320.8 Fahrenheit or minus 196 degrees centigrade. These freezed embryos can be transferred into the uterus whenever required and whenever the female is ready for implantation. Now what is this zygote intrafallopian transfer or ZIFT? As in intravitro fertilization, the zygote which develops up to the 8 blastomia stage is transferred into the fallopian tube by laparoscopy. The zygote continues its natural divisions and migrates towards the uterus where it gets implanted into the endometrium. Here you can see that through the ultrasound guidance the zygote is inserted into the fallopian tube. What is this gamete intrafallopian transfer otherwise called gift? The transfer of an ovum collected from a donor into the fallopian tube. In this the eggs and the sperms are placed into the fallopian tube. In the fallopian tube, the fertilization occurs of the ovum and the sperm resulting in the formation of the zygote. We can see here that the ovum is inserted into the fallopian tube along with the sperms. The zygote that is formed in the fallopian tube travels towards the uterus and gets implanted into the inner lining of the uterus and further it continues its further development. Intracytoplasmic sperm injection otherwise called ICSI. In this method only one sperm is taken which is of best quality and is injected into the focal point of the egg to fertilize the egg. The sperm is injected very carefully into the cytoplasm of the egg so that the nucleus of the sperm and the nucleus of the ovum fuse together to form the zygote. Fertilization occurs in 75 to 85 percent of the eggs injected with the sperms and the zygote is allowed to divide to form an 8 cell blastomere. After the blastomere is formed then it is transferred to the uterus to develop a protective pregnancy. Here you can see that the ovum is held with a holding tool and with a fine needle the single sperm is inserted into the ooplasm of the egg. In this diagram you can see that the donor ovum can be inserted into the fallopian tube along with the sperm for fertilization or the zygote can be inserted into the fallopian tube. The zygote then slowly multiplies and forms a 8 cell structure or blastomere and this blastomere becomes a marula and a blastula and the blastocyst and the blastocyst gets implanted into the uterus. What is surrogacy? Surrogacy is a method of assisted reproduction or agreement whereby a woman agrees to carry a pregnancy for another person who will become the newborn child's parent after birth. This surrogacy has lot of legal problems. Through in vitro fertilization, the embryos are created in a lab and are transferred into the surrogate mother's uterus. And once the child is born, before lactation or after lactation, the child is handed over to the parents and the agreement is terminated. Now let us discuss about male infertility. Azoospermia is defined as the absence of spermatozoa in the ejaculate semen on at least two occasions and is observed approximately in 1% of the population. What is microtesticular sperm extraction otherwise called TESE? Microsurgical sperm retrieval from the testicle involves a small midline incision is made in the scrotum and a portion of the testicle tissue is taken which is under the microscope the seminiferous tubules are separated and dilated and small amount of testicular tissue in the areas of the active sperm production are removed and improved for sperm yield compared to traditional biopsy techniques. Here you can see the TESC procedure. Testicular sperm aspiration. In this, a fine needle is inserted into the seminiferous tubules of the testis and the semen are aspirated into the syringe with the dilavent. The percutaneous epididymal sperm aspiration, otherwise called PESA, P -E -S -A, 
Here, a fine needle along with the diluent syringe is inserted directly into the epididymis. So the stored sperms are aspirated into the syringe. What is microsurgical testicular sperm extraction, otherwise called MESC? In this, the small incision is made in the scrotum and the sperms that are stored in the epididymis are directly extracted through a syringe. So today we have discussed about human reproductive health part 3. In this we talked about infertility and assisted reproductive technology. Thank you very much. Kindly subscribe, like, share and comment the channel Read Med Prep Academy. Log on to www.readmedprepacademy.com. Our Facebook ID is Read Med Prep Academy. Our email is readmedprepacademy at gmail.com. Kindly post your questions in the comment box. We will reply with appropriate answers. Thank you very much.